Hello Arch102, welcome to the space unit. Uh, I'm going to start with the cubes. I'm going to click File, New, and I'm going to enter my dimensions. Let's put that on pixels. And real quick, I'm going to double check and make sure I got the dimensions right. Yep, 600 by 400. Okay. And actually, with the cubes, I don't, it doesn't really matter if we do them RGB or grayscale, but be using RGB and I'll name it. Make sure I'm using the right file name. 1 point cube. Whoops. Thought I was typing into my name there. Okay, so basically what all of these are going to start with is a horizon line. I'm going to use the line tool. You can also use the brush tool just as easily. And just draw a horizontal line. Oh, I've got it set to an arrowhead here. I don't really need that. So I'm going to take that off of there and double check my options bar before I start. Right, forgot about that, didn't I? Okay, so... Let's turn off the arrowheads on that and set the line weight to, let's say, 2 pixels. And now let's try it. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is set your horizon line. And this will be in the composition, this will be where the, the sky meets the ground, more or less, every time you draw this. So moving it up or down on the canvas will have an effect on the composition and you can try it um, in some different spots and remember when you're dropping this first horizon line down remember the rule of thirds one of the top or bottom third would be good I'm just gonna have it kind of in the middle um, because I think it's easier to show the the idea of what we're doing here so <clears throat> what I'm gonna do here is I'm just going to draw a one-point perspective cube and in order to do that I'll make a couple of lines that are vanishing into uh, a vanishing point so I need to decide where my vanishing point is going to be I'm only going to have one so I'm going to put that basically right in the middle it doesn't have to be in the middle it can be just as easily it can be over on one side or the other but I'm going to put mine in the middle Okay, and now I'm going to draw a square. I'll just use the rectangle tool. And I actually, I, I'm not saying don't fill this, but I'm going to choose to not use a fill. I'm just going to use an outline. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a square in here, anywhere. That's got kind of a thick stroke. Let's take that stroke size down. And let's give that a try again. There we go. I'm going to move it up a little bit more. Okay, and I'm going to turn on my line tool. I didn't get that quite right. That should be ideally touching the thing. I'm going to draw a line from the vanishing point to the top left corner of the square there. Then I'm going to draw another line from the vanishing point to the bottom left corner. And one more line from the vanishing point to the bottom right corner. Now if this square were over on this side of the page, it would be the, the corner you would not draw the line to would be the top left. So basically, because I can't see behind the square, so I can't see the line that comes up through here, unless you want to draw a transparent square. Okay, now what I need to do is I need to just chop out the back side of the square. And to do that, I just simply draw a straight line, vertical line, just basically anywhere along this plane that you want the um, back side of the square to be, cube. 
back side of the cube to be. And the bottom side, I just draw a horizontal line right, at, right on that corner, and it should just go straight to the right. And now I have my cube. Now you can take this and you can fill it in if you want. I don't really care if you do or not, but let's just group up these different layers here so that they're, um, actually I think these first two are my vanishing point and horizon line. So I'm going to group these separately and I'll just call that horizon. And let's group these and I'll call that, if it'll let me, cube. Okay, so save that and let's start a new file, another 600 by 400. Now to draw a two-point perspective, again, the lines describing the heights and the widths are going back to their two respective vanishing points. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to draw my horizon line. It's always going to start with a horizon line and one, two, or three vanishing points, obviously two-point just as it sounds, we have two vanishing points. So that'll be fine. We'll just put them right there. And I'm going to group these together. Call that group horizon. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is I'm not going to start with a square this time. Um, what I'm going to do instead is, because we're not looking at the um, the object face on anymore. We're just looking at a corner of it. So we start with just a single vertical line. And what we do to get the first face of the um, cube is we bring our we bring one point on the line back to the first vanishing point and then the other point on the line goes back to the same vanishing point. Okay, so that gives us our first plane. And we take the same points, the top point, and we go back to the other vanishing point. So now we're drawing the depths. Okay, so let's call this plane width and let's call this plane depth. So you can see they've both got their own vanishing points. Okay, now to um, carve this into a uh, three-dimensional cube. I'm going to take my shape tool and I'm going to actually make two vertical lines. One's going to chop off the left face of this cube and one's going to chop off the right face of the cube. Okay, and now all that's left is to draw the bottom face of the cube right here. And to do that, what I do is I start with one of the corners. It doesn't really matter which one. I'm just going to take that corner and I'm going to draw a straight line to the vanishing point on the opposite side, basically. And same thing with this corner. I'm going to take a line from that corner right down to the opposite vanishing point. Okay, and let's group these together. And that is two-point perspective. Okay, another new file, and same settings once again. I kind of skipped the naming, but you want to name them just like this. One point cube, your name, and then your name two point cube, your name three point cube. Okay, so for three point, I'm going to put the, ver uh, the horizon line kind of high. And this needs three vanishing points, so I'm going to say one, two, and for the one down here, I'm going to make it 3. So 
there's our three vanishing points. Now, every line that we draw in a three-point perspective drawing has to recede to one of these vanishing points. You have to figure out which one it is that you're trying to draw. And um, oh, it gave me three of the same shape, so that's interesting. I'll just I'll group it anyway. Why not? Spelled it wrong. Okay, so <clears throat> let's start with the height of this cube. I'm going to draw a line from anywhere on the page down to my first vanishing point. And in order to decide the the um, the actual height, I just need to decide where this starts and stops. So I can start it right on the top up here if I want. And I'm going to draw a line from the top back to those two vanishing points. And I'm going to make this cube about yay tall. I'm going to stop it right about here. And we're going to draw that right back to the same vanishing point. So kind of like two-point perspective here. Except that we've got this, this height, this vanishing point that that we use for height. So, okay, so now just like two point perspective, we need to chop off the left side and the right side. And again, in order to do that, every time you draw <clears throat> a line for the object's height, it has to go down to this vanishing point. So, I'm actually drawing the two height lines and I'm actually converging them right down here. And then now that just leaves the top side, and all I have to do again is um, carve off that top side with um, one line from this corner to the opposite corner vanishing point, and one line from this corner to, again, the opposite corner vanishing point. <clears throat> okay, and we can group those together. Call that cube. And this is what I would call an acceptable cube exercise. You can certainly feel free to um, make this a little nicer by rendering it up a little bit with um, some brush tools and so on. Um, that would be nice to see. So now on to the tree line street. I'm going to close these and I'm going to make sure I've got the right size here, 7 by 5, okay? You can also do 5 by 7 if you want. I'll do 7 by 5. And when you're doing 7 by 5, when it's talking about inches, just double check your units. Make sure that you're on the units that it's talking about. All the assignments are either going to give pixels or inches as units. Because again, 7 by 5 pixels is not enough information to work with. It'll be a problem. Okay, so actually I think I want this to be horizontal. I'm going to click on image, image rotation, and I'm going to flip it 90 degrees clockwise because I want it to be vertical instead of horizontal. Um, what I want to do is, uh, just like before, I'm going to start with a horizon line. That is always where these are going to start every time. And I'm going to pick, I'm going to try to actually now use my rule of thirds. So I'm going to pick the top third. That means we're going to be seeing more ground than sky, basically. And I'm going to pick a vanishing point here. And I'm going to just, for a little bit of visual interest, I'm going to put it on one side or the other. Okay, and let's make that the horizon line. This is definitely going to, especially on this part of the assignment, you're going to want this to be on a separate layer because you're going to want to be able to turn it off and just see the scene. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm going to create a line that goes goof that up a little bit. It goes from the horizon line down somewhere, you know, you can go anywhere you want really, but 
the horizon line down here and the vanishing point down to here. Okay, and now basically we've got a road. And this is going under the horizon group, which I did not want. It's like my groups have stopped cooperating with me since my third cube. Okay. Okay, and um, I'm going to, I'm going to come back to this in a second, but I'm going to create a new blank layer, and I'm going to turn on my brush tool, and I'm just going to grab a, yeah, that'll work. Oh, okay. My, I was trying to press my bracket keys and they weren't working. So, okay. So let's pick a color. I'm gonna, st I'm gonna start drawing a tree. We're supposed to line this street with some trees, and I'm gonna just make a. Oops. You know what? I've got it on grayscale. No, no, I don't. What's going on here? Why is this doing? Let's change the opacity to a hundred percent. Oh, okay. That was it just the opacity. All right, so I'm going to just draw a tree here, if I can. Okay, and I'm going to add some foliage to it, and we can certainly do this Bob Ross style, and it can be happy foliage if you would like. I'm just going to kind of make some green shapes here. Um, let's grab two different colors and let's do some color jitter on the brush here. I'm going to turn on my brush options and we'll go into, um, let's get into some shape dynamics. Let's do a little angle jitter. Oops. Let's control the angle with the pen tilt and add a little jitter to it. And I'm going to do just a little bit of scattering. I want to control it with the pen pressure. And color dynamics, I'm going to turn that on. There we go. And I'm going to dial down the saturation some because this is too saturated. Okay. All right, so now I can kind of dab on this for a minute and just kind of start creating. Oh, went a little too deep there. Just kind of start creating sort of a um, textured effect. And in a moment, I'll switch to the maple leaf brush. You're probably thinking, hey, what's what's up with that? Why don't we use the maple leaf brush? Well, I was just kind of getting the basic texture down here. There we go. That'll work. And let's go to the maple leaf brush. Um, I'll go to the brush tip shape. And there's my leaves. I'm going to have to take the size down some because that's too big. And I will turn angle jitter up to 100% with no control. Because I want these rotating all over the place. Um, scattering, I'm going to scatter it with no control. the count on pen pressure and the foreground background jitter I'm gonna leave that pretty high and put that up to 100% actually add some more saturation jitter okay
Well, no, actually, on second thought, I'm going to take the foreground background jitter down, and I'm going to I'm going to kind of paint in some highlights here and there, so I can kind of choose where I want the highlights to be a little bit. Let's bring it down even a little further. And I'll flip between my foreground background color periodically. That again is the X key. I think I'm getting a little too much jitter there. I don't want this kind of stuff going on, so I'm going to turn down the scattering jitter. Yeah, it's at 406%. And turn on both axes. Okay, so, because I don't want it kind of flying off into la-la land over there. And I'm going to flip and draw some shadows, flip again, draw some highlights, flip, draw some shadows, flip, draw some highlights, flip shadows, flip highlights, flip shadows, flip highlights, flip shadows. So you can see how I'm kind of building this up here. And let's get just a little more highlight on there. Okay, so I can go further. Um, but I think you get pretty much the idea. Now what I want to do is I want to create um, a tree line street by um, repeating this tree. And you can redraw it several times over if you want to, but it's not a necessity. Um, let's, let's figure out how to repeat this. Well, basically what I need to do is um, I've got a line here for the road and another line for the other side of the road. I need it to be lined with trees. Well, what happens is um, three, uh, any point perspective uses the principle of diminishing size. So what I need to do is I need to figure out how the size will diminish on these trees as they go back into the distance. And basically that just works. It's just as simple as drawing another line. This is just a guideline to, um, oops, I just drew a line a little too quick there. Um, this is basically just a guideline that's going to um, help me place those trees. So I'm going to draw a line from the vanishing point up to, you know, approximately the top of the tree that I just drew. And I'll draw another line from the vanishing point up to, you know, somewhere over here. So I'm going to take this tree and I'm going to repeat it following those lines. And, whoops, forgot to actually select the tree. Let's put the tree on the top layer. And I'm going to hold down the Alt key with my Move tool on. That's a nice, easy way to copy stuff. And I'll just drag it. And then I'll size it down a bit. And now this one is on top of this one, which is wrong. The one that's in front should be on top. This one should be overlapping the one behind it. So that doesn't make any sense. Um, now if you want to do shadows, um, there's, there's a few ways to, there's lots of different ways to do it. You could certainly just turn on the paintbrush and draw some shadows very simply you know just basic stuff let me turn on a basic brush here just draw a basic shadow that follows the the um, dynamic of the scene like that that would be fine I'm gonna go back a couple um, here's another neat little way to do it you can make a copy of the Oops, I grabbed the wrong one. You make a copy of the object that you want to shadow, just as if we were making another copy of it. Um, and I'm going to transform it, but I'm going to turn it on its side. And, you know, let's say the light source is somewhere over here. The shadows are going to cast in a line away from it. So 
we'll pretend that we've got kind of a setting sun here. And you can skew these a little bit when you're transforming by using the command key or control on PC. So sometimes it makes sense to um, to skew the shadows a little bit like that. So this works really really nicely um, as long as you don't have any terrain to um, change that like if this is basically just flat in other words it works pretty nicely. If there's going to be a change in the terrain then you have to kind of cut the image and start sliding individual pieces of it around and it does get a little confusing. You might want to just draw it and just do the best you can with that but that's up to you. So I'm going to apply my transformation and what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the levels and we're going to talk a little more about levels in the next unit but um, or in upcoming unit in the value unit. The image adjustments menu I can get into the levels. Basically the goal is to just make this black and the way to do that is just to simply remap, oh, I went the wrong way, remap the black point, which is this one, up to the end here, more or less. And then I can change my output levels to zero and something really low, like nine. And that'll do it. I'm going to click OK and I've got a really nice cast shadow and this is um, perfectly acceptable it's pretty good if you want to make it even better you might want to take this particular um, layer and change the blending mode to multiply which is really good for shadows and probably it doesn't need to be at a hundred percent opacity probably it should be like 50 to 60 maybe or you know just use your judgment just play with it and, see what you think but a little lower opacity on a multiply level is probably a good idea okay and then I can take that now and group it together as a tree and I can oops I think I grouped the wrong thing yeah I did shoot I can take these two and group them together. This is what happens when you don't name your layers, so I should really be naming these layers. Okay, so there's a tree, and now when I duplicate it, the shadow comes along with it. So I can duplicate this layer again, and I can do that transformation. Let's do it from the other corner to get me a little closer. And again, I'm using those vanishing point lines as a guide for how to transform this particular this particular bit of the image. And I'll make another copy of it. And this one's obviously going to be really small. It's getting smaller and smaller. By the way, these don't have to like line up exactly because trees are often different sizes. And like I said, um, you don't have to draw all of these trees individually. You can just copy them. Um, if you want to draw them all individually, then by all means, feel free. So now I want to just, I'm going to do this kind of quick and dirty and wrap this up, but now I want to um, create a sky and a ground and I'm going to create a couple of layers for that. Um, they should both be under pretty much everything else so why don't I take these shapes and group them together as guides before my layers get every me any messier. I'll just call this ground. I'm just kind of abbreviating things here. We'll call that sky. 
and I'll fill in a ground I'm going to use a gradient tool for the ground. Um, I don't want it black to white though. I'm going to make it kind of a brown, brownish ground. Okay. There we go. That'll do. And I lost track of where my guides were. Let's just turn off the visibility on the ground for a second so I can see him again. And I will drag out a marquee to select just my sky. I'm going to turn my gradient tool back on. And for the sky, I'm going to choose, I'm going to make a blue sky. And I'll actually edit this gradient just a tad. I'm just going to add this last stop right here that's going to be kind of a brighter bit of the sky. That might even be a little too much. There we go. And Maybe I'll even add a little piece that's a little darker. I don't know. I, eh, that might be a little bit too much. Okay, so I'll just leave it at that. And let's see here. Okay. Okay, so there's a sky and a ground. Um, I need the guides in the horizon back on top here so I can see stuff. And let's just create a road. Make a new layer, please. Thank you. Because we do have to have a street for our tree line street. Where's my brush? There it is. Silly me. Okay. And I'll just go with a simple gray color for the road. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to single click on the uh, point, the, hori the horizon, sorry, <laughs> the vanishing point is what I'm trying to say. And then I'm going to hold down shift and I'm going to single click on another point down here. And it'll draw a straight line between those two points. And then I'm going to Again, single click up here and shift click down here. Straight line between those two points. I'll turn on just the visibility of that so you can see. Different use of the shift button. And oops, that should have been that should have been enclosed. How did I end up with something that wasn't enclosed? Blast. I don't know where the I don't know where the openings are. Well, shoot. Okay, how about I do this? Didn't want to cooperate with me on this demo. So, how about if I turn on the polygonal lasso tool and let's lasso out a selection basically create the same thing that I was trying to do there. And I'm going just a little bit outside of the boundaries here on the bottom and, and the um, the sides all the way up to where the where the point meets the canvas. And that's fine, you can do that. And then I'm going to complete the selection by clicking on the original point and I'll just click um, whoops, I'll click edit, fill, and I'm going to use my foreground color to fill it. There we go. Haha, <laughs> trying to mess with me. Okay, and you should add some, uh, I'm going to make this quick to kind of wrap this up, but you should add some 
some lines in the road, some road markers, so, uh, some lane markers, and you should probably do them a little bit better than this, but you should um, do that with a line guide to show you you can kind of divide the road in half then you can either take your brush or you could actually just use the line tool if you wanted to but the problem is that the size doesn't diminish the size actually needs to diminish on the on the um, the uh, lane divider too so we need a second line and then I will paint over that perhaps I'll paint over that okay I said I was going to do this quick so I'm going to do it quick and these should get a little longer with each one because the size of the road markers are diminishing as we go back in space. So that's why they should get a little longer with each one. Come on. There we go. And it would not hurt to have um, some more scenery than this and some trees on the other side of the street as well. Um, some uh, something going on in the sky like a sun or a moon and something going on in the um, in the ground now when you put your sun or moon on think about where you cast the shadows so if I put my sun over to the left that would not make very much sense in this scene because the shadows are casting in this direction which would indicate that the light source is coming from this direction so I need to think about that when I'm drawing my my light source. So, let's see. that by the way is what my lane markers look like. And when I'm all done, I should be able to turn off the guides in the horizon line to actually look at the scene. And save it and upload it and have fun with it.